in at least $20 million from countries such as Russia, Kazakhstan, and Ukraine. The GOP's memo showing a day after a Kazakhstani businessman sent Hunter Biden more than $142,000. Hunter bought a Porsche for that exact same price. The record's also tracking a Russian oligarch's $3.5 million payment to a Hunter Biden Devin Archer shell company. Then Vice President Joe Biden had dinner with both the Kazakhstani businessman and Russian oligarch in 2014 and 2015. Joining us right now is Pennsylvania Congressman Dan Muser. He's a member of the House Financial Services and Small Business Committees. Congressman, it's great to see you. Maria, so great to see you. Thank Thanks. you so much for joining us. I want to talk about finance in a second because I know when you all get back from uh, recess, you're going to have to deal with the government running out of money. But first, let's talk about these new findings from the House Oversight Committee. How do you see all of this? Well, it's, it's pretty ugly. It's pretty clear that Joe Biden uh, lied. Uh, and why did he lie? Because he knew the business that was taking place. He knew a lot about the business. I mean, he informed his son that he was in the clear. In the clear for what, Joe? And why were you lying? Because you knew, you, without pronouncing it, I mean, you must have known that this, uh, this, there was some shady dealings taking place. And with countries like Romania and Kazakhstan and the Moscow mayor paying him three and a half million dollars, and then to celebrate going to Cafe Milano, from the laptops to the White House records to the bank records. And how about just the whole, you know, I get pushback sometimes when we refer to the Biden crime family. I mean, let's face it. I mean, he's got, he's got his grandkids. He's got his grown children. He's got grown relatives receiving hundreds of thousands of dollars into their bank accounts. Yeah. I, I know if somebody, anybody in my family got <clears throat> that amount of money into their bank account, they'd be asking a few questions. Yeah, it's pretty incredible, actually, that they set up all of these 20 shell companies while he was vice president. Mm -hmm. Why set up all of those companies? And you mentioned in the Cafe Milano situation, that was when Joe Biden, as vice president, showed up at a Hunter Biden meeting. They were all meeting at Cafe Milano. Uh, you've, you've looked at this over the years as well, Lee Zeldin. What I have been told by the other media channels is that there's no evidence. Right. So this is amazing news, this claim that there's actual evidence. And when you think about the meetings, the bank records, the documents, the pics, the laptop, the WhatsApp messages, the emails, the whistleblowers, the business partners, the clients, they're <laughs> all sounding off right now, connecting all of the dots. And still, <clears throat> on these, these other networks right now, all they want to feed uh, to their listeners is that there's absolutely no evidence of any of it. That's a whole nother scandal, the fact that these are the most serious allegations ever uh, ever posed a, a, on a president and the mainstream media will not cover it. Yeah. I mean, that, that in and of itself is a whole nother issue. President Biden snapped at Fox News' as Peter Ducey uh, this week when asked about his involvement in his son's business dealings. Watch this. There's this testimony now where one of your son's former business associates is claiming that you we're on speakerphone a lot with them, talking business. Is that what? I've never talked business in anybody. And I, I know you'd have a lousy question. Well, what do you, it's, why is that a lousy question? Because it's not true. Lousy question, Congressman. Why is it a lousy question for the media to actually be probing this story? <laughs> because, because they're hoping that they will. Uh, the, the brand, the Joe Biden brand, is access to the United States taxpayer dollars. Uh, he, they created that access. It was an illusion. Like my colleague Dan Armstrong stated that Archer supposedly said that, that, that it was an illusion. That was Goldman's words. He came right, out Dan and Right, Dan Goldman, yeah, well. yeah. Right, so there was no allusion to it. That was what was being sold. It was being sold access. And what was the result of, of that? those pay, payments? Yeah. There always has to be some deliverables. We did see one, right, with the, uh, with the prosecutor in the Ukraine being fired. We all saw that. Yeah. And, and there are others. And that's what we're going to find out in an impeachment inquiry. Well, th that's what I'm going to ask you next. Where are you on this impeachment inquiry? Because Marjorie Taylor Greene told me that she doesn't feel like she has, you guys have enough votes th from the members to actually do this uh, inquiry. I know Kevin McCarthy says if it levels to the, if it rises to the levels, we'll do it. Is this going to be a priority when you all come back in September? Well, we got a number of priorities, of course, and you, you alluded to a, to, to a couple as far as appropriations bills and all, and that's real important stuff. But absolutely, we can, we can, we can walk and, and, and uh, investigate at the same time. So, yes, I'm all for an impeachment inquiry. I think uh, the ma vast majority of Republican members and those w will get on board because it's an inquiry. And you know what, Maria? We're the only ones doing it. Mm. DOJ completely focused on, on helping the IRS 
and, and, and disclaiming uh, whistleblowers, the Republican majority is going to bring some accountability and uh, do everything we can to get to the bottom of this for the, for, for the American people. So the American people understand whether or not their president is engaged in criminal activities. Yeah. Payoffs. And, and with all of this evidence that we're seeing every day something new, um, what happens? They indict Donald Trump. So we've got newly released court documents revealing special counsel Jack Smith obtained a search warrant for data and records yeah. related to President Trump's Twitter account. Mm -hmm. uh, Twitter now, of course, known as X, initially pushed back on the court's order, refusing to comply. They refused for three days, the social media platform asking if they could tell Trump's legal team first. But the court denied the request and fined the company $350,000 for the delay. Trump responded on Truth Social, saying this, just found out that crooked Joe Biden's DOJ secretly attacked my Twitter account, making it a point not to let me know about this major hit on my civil rights. My political opponent is going crazy trying to infringe on my campaign for president. Is that what this is about? They want, I mean, Byron Donalds this weekend said to me they want to bleed Trump dry of money so that he can actually do what needs to be done for a campaign. Is, is that what, how do you see that in terms of this coincidence that something happens in terms of evidence coming out on Hunter, Hunter Biden and the next day another attack on Donald Trump? I think it's pretty obvious, and the American people I think are, w are waking up to it. I mean, doing everything they can to suppress their their own. Uh, malfeasance activities and hide their own accounts and do desperately try to keep the Biden family out of jail. Meanwhile, they're completely focused on indicting their, their number one uh, opponent in, in a political uh, campaign. Yeah. I mean, you know, that, that's banana republic stuff. American people got to un understand that, that that is exactly what's happening. And we, we're going to investigate it. We're going to find out what's, what's, what's going on. Mm. And the proper resources have to be dedicated to uh, whether or not the, the, the president has committed high crimes and misdemeanors and, and taken bribes. Stunning. Tiana, did you want to add something? Yes. My question is that we know that the Obama administration internally warned Biden that his son was running around Ukraine, running around Russia, taking bags of cash. So why didn't Obama decide to take Biden off of the Ukraine mandate, right? Mm. It was They were warned. They warned Biden and Hunter personally. Uh -huh. And yet... He stayed on there, so I'm curious about the Obama administration's complicity. Well, you know, <laughs> well, um, uh, um, Obama wasn't exactly a micromanager. Clearly, uh, he allowed a lot of this to take place, and at the one point he said, "Joe, I hope you know what you're doing." Right, and and he also said, "Never, never uh, leave it up to Joe uh, to to." I'm not quoting it right to, to foul things up, <laughs> and uh, and that prophecy came to fruition. Yeah, well, look, real quick, on uh, the end of September, government running out of money, do you expect you'll have a continuing resolution? What's the plan? We need the problem solved. Kevin McCarthy is very good at that, as you know, uh, so as well as Steve Scalise and others. So uh, we likely will not have our appropriations completed by September 30th. So, yes, I would imagine a, sh a very short-term CR, and then we run Republican majority appropriations allocations of the American people's dollars. Yeah, well, that's the power of the... Join the conversation. Put your comments and suggestions below in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing to this news channel. You will be notified of any breaking news and new post as you become part and parcel of the McCad TV family. Please like and share McCad TV. We love you all. Please support McCad TV Foundation by joining membership and visiting Amazon UK to purchase the displayed books to aid our orphanage projects across Africa.